Hello, my name is David Mackay and I work at Pearson on stakeholder engagement with higher education. In the last few years, I've visited over 100 universities to explain the changes to Pearson qualifications and the implications of those changes to those institutions. This included the changes to A-levels, BTEC nationals and GCSEs, more recently, I have focused mainly on the changes to the BTEC nationals, in particular making universities aware of the different outcomes on the reform qualifications and the fact that fewer students will achieve the top grades. This was to ensure that they set their entry requirements appropriately for the reformed BTEC qualifications. However, as well as giving information to the universities, I have also received feedback from them on the progression of BTEC students to higher education. All of the universities that I visited complained to me that many BTEC students put the wrong BTEC title on their UCAS application form. This may be problematic, as if they put the title of a qualification that is smaller than the one that they are taking, they are not likely to get an offer from the universities. Conversely, if they put the title of a qualification that is larger than the one that they are studying, they may receive an offer, but it will be null and void when the results come out, because their actual achievement may not meet the entry requirements for that particular degree programme. However, having looked closely at the UCAS apply form, I now appreciate the difficulty that BTEC students face because of the very large number of BTEC titles from which they have to choose. UCAS has to include old BTEC qualifications which are no longer available as mature students apply to university and need to be able to find the qualification that they took some years ago. Also, not all BTEC qualifications are BTEC nationals. Some are BTEC specialist qualifications and some of those are on the UCAS tariff and so must be included. It is important that students input correct but also complete data on the apply form. If they complete all sections of the apply form, universities are likely to look on them more favourably and students will then maximise their chances of getting the right offer. This presentation has been designed for students who are currently studying their BTEC qualification but it should also be helpful for those who have already completed and certificated their BTEC qualification. I have noted that students will need to take a slightly different approach for those taking the QCF version and the new reformed RQF version. So I will run through the steps needed to input full and correct information for a QCF BTEC national qualification and a reformed RQF BTEC national qualification. I'm going to focus on the completion of the education section of the apply form and first we will have a look at the screen where applicants input their school or college details. I have inputted some dummy details here with a fictitious college name and centre number. It's helpful if students include the centre number we work with UCAS to match the students' UCAS applications to our student registrations to determine which BTEC results we need to send to UCAS in the summer. The centre number is one of the pieces of information that is very useful in this matching process. So please make sure that students know what this number is before they start to complete the form. This labelled box asks applicants to indicate when they've finished or intend to finish their course. This will usually be July for QCF students, but will be August for RQF students who are going to take an external assessment in May or June at the end of their course, as that is when they will receive their results. It is possible for those on the reformed RQF qualification to complete in July if they complete all of their external assessments by the January series and we've had experience of students doing so. However, the vast majority of students taking the RQF BTEC nationals will be taking at least one external assessment in the summer series 
of their second year. Once they have completed this page, they will click Save, and that will take them to this screen. It is helpful to watch the video as it gives useful guidance on completion of the form. For example, it draws attention to the question mark icons beside some of the boxes, which explain what needs to be added in those boxes. This box asks applicants to indicate the highest level of qualification that they will have achieved before they start their degree program. And students taking a BTEC National will need to click on below honours degree level qualifications from the drop down menu. Students click here to add details of their BTEC qualification. First, I'm going to take you through inputting details of a QCF BTEC national qualification. And when students click on the Add Qualifications link, it takes them through to this screen. As you will see, there are a few examples of qualifications that may be selected. These include A-levels, Scottish hires, the access to HE diploma. Now, there are two BTEC qualifications in the list, but this is where applicants need to be very careful. This is the QCF BTEC extended diploma. But this is not the QCF BTEC diploma. It is an older version that was in existence pre-2010. So, it is best to start to input the title of the qualification in this search box. But first, let's have a look to see what UCAS is looking for in terms of the titles. These are not the current formal QCF BTEC titles. They don't have Pearson at the start and don't include level three. The format of the titles, as you can see, is BTEC certificate in brackets QCF, BTEC subsidiary diploma in brackets QCF, and so on. It is all important that there is QCF at the end. I'm going to take you through inputting details for the BTEC Level 3 Subsidiary Diploma in Business QCF. Now, I'm going to input the title one word at a time to show you the suggested titles that appear. So, inputting BTEC in the search box you will see that this produces a very long list of suggested titles that actually goes below the bottom of the page. Adding BTEC subsidiary reduces the length of the list considerably. And we can see that here is the BTEC subsidiary diploma QCF for us to click on. This takes us through to the generic screen for the BTEC Subsidiary Diploma QCF, and there is a drop-down menu here to click on to find the subject. We are adding business as our example, and so we click here. The qualification date is the intended date of completion of the qualification. And as I indicated earlier, it will usually be July for those taking the QCF BTEC Nationals. 
The next box down has a drop-down menu for the awarding organisation and has Pearson and Edexcel to select from. Current students will click on Pearson. This is followed by a box for the level, which is level 3. The grade box has a drop-down menu. Those who have completed their qualification can click on the grade achieved. Those who are currently studying the qualification will click on pending. We will now add some unique details, but before we do so, let's look at a few important points. Universities tell me that students often fail to complete this section. It's important that they do so because Firstly, it will show the applicant in a good light to the universities to which they are applying. And secondly, some courses require the student to be taking specific units. For example, most engineering degree programs require the optional unit, further mathematics for engineering technicians, and so completing this section may be essential to securing an offer. There is no drop-down menu for the units, and so the titles have to be inputted manually. Now, although it states qualification date in the unit section, this is the date that the unit was achieved or is likely to be achieved. This has to be on or before the date that the whole qualification is to be completed. The unit grade is inputted manually. And this time, if the unit has not yet been completed, the grade box is left blank. So, I have inputted manually the title for one of the mandatory units for business, that is, the business environment. As I said, qualification date here is the date that the unit has been or is to be completed, and I have indicated that this unit has already been taken. The next box is the credit value. Most units are 60 guided learning hours and so have 10 credits. A few are smaller with 30 guided learning hours and so have 5 credits, and a few are larger, usually project units, with 120 guided learning hours, and so have 20 credits. However, as I said, the vast majority have 60 guided learning hours and 10 credits. Please make sure that students have this information. The next box is the level of the unit. The vast majority of units are at level 3, but a very small number are at levels 2 and 4. Again, please make sure that students have this information. The unit grade is added manually and the box is left blank if the unit hasn't yet been completed. You click here to add details of another unit And as you will see, another set of boxes appears. Once all of the unit details have been added, and that includes units which have not yet been taken, you click on Save, and that will take you back to the Home Education screen. When we return to that screen, you will see that there is a box for the BTEC registration number. I mentioned earlier that we go through a process with UCAS to match the UCAS applications to our BTEC registrations. The BTEC registration number is another piece of information that is very helpful in this process. And so please make sure that your students know what their BTEC registration number is before they start to complete their application form. Some students are taking more than one BTEC qualification and so will have more than one BTEC registration number. The UCAS Applied form currently has only one box for the BTEC registration number, but this is not a problem as one number will help us match the student.
These students may enter any of their BTEC registration numbers, but it would make sense for them to add the number for the main BTEC qualification in their study program. So this is the screen that they return to when they click on save, having completed their qualification and unit details. If they wish to add another qualification, there are two possible links to click on. The top one allows them to add another BTEC subsidiary diploma and will take them straight through to the generic screen for that qualification. They click on the lower link for any other qualifications, which could be an A-level or, in fact, any other size of BTEC qualification. Clicking on this link will require them to go through the search process again. So here is the box for the BTEC registration number that has appeared. So make sure the students know what it is. As I said, there is only one box for this, and those taking more than one BTEC qualification should add the number for their main BTEC qualification they are studying, and that will probably be the largest one. So now I'm going to go through the process for adding a reformed RQF BTAC national qualification. First, we will look to see how UCAS has displayed the titles for these qualifications. This time, they reflect the full titles for the qualifications. So we have, for example, the Pearson BTEC Level 3 National Certificate. There are also the guided learning hours of 180 and the statement first teaching September 2016. The latter refers to first teaching of the reformed suite. We introduced some subject titles in 2016, but then introduced others in 2017, 2018, and indeed 2019. Students may be confused at, at this as they will be thinking that they didn't actually start their course in 2016. However, just to clar clarify what this means, this is referring to first teaching of the whole suite of reformed RQF BTEC qualifications, and that was in 2016. I'll just draw your attention to the third title down. This is the Pearson BTEC Level 3 Foundation Diploma, and as you see, this has been abbreviated to Foundation DIP, and that's because of a restriction on the number of characters that UCAS has in the box for this. Please also note that the guided learning hours are 510 or 540 for this qualification. We have this slight difference between subjects, but this is not a problem as all BTEC National Foundation diplomas have exactly the same UCAS points. So, as an example, I'm going to take you through inputting details for the Pearson BTEC Level 3 National Extended Diploma in health and social care. Once again, here is the qualification search screen. And as I explained previously, it is best to start to input details for the title in the search box. In order to show you the number of possible Pearson titles, I'm going to input the qualification title one word at a time. As you will see, adding Pearson produces a very long list of qualification titles that actually goes off the bottom of the page. And some of the qualifications, as you see, are not actually BTEC qualifications. Adding Pearson BTEC produces a shorter list, but it is still very long. Adding level three as well shortens it further. But when we add Pearson BTEC level three national, we can clearly see the list of titles for the reformed BTEC qualifications. And here is the qualification that we are looking for. 
The Pearson BTEC Level 3 National Extended Diploma 1080 First Teaching September 2016. Now, when I've looked at this screen on other occasions, the order of the titles has been different, and so don't assume that the titles are in order of the size. You need to look carefully to find the title that you want. So when we click on Pearson BTEC Level 3 National Extended Diploma 1080 First Teaching September 2016, It takes us through to this screen, which is the generic screen for the Pearson BTEC Level 3 National Extended Diploma. Once again, there is a drop-down menu to click on for the subject. And we are going to take Health and Social Care as our example. The qualification date is the intended end date for the qualification and will be August for RQF students who are sitting at least one of their external assessments in the summer exam series in May or June of their second year. So most of the RQF students will be in that position. The next box down is for the awarding organisation and this time there is only one option of Pearson to select. Once again, there is a drop-down menu for the qualification grade. The list of grades is much longer here as this is the extended diploma. Students who have not yet completed their qualification will click on pending in the drop-down menu. We are now going to add unit details, but before we do, let's have a look at a few points to note. For these qualifications, the mandatory unit titles may be selected from a drop-down menu. The optional unit titles have to be inputted manually in the box labelled Other. Once more, the qualification date in this unit detail section is actually the date when the unit was completed or when it is intended to be completed. If the qualification date, for the full qualification that is, was given as August 2020, then the dates here for the units must be on or before that date. The unit grade is inputted manually and the box is left blank if the unit has not yet been completed. So I have clicked on the mandatory unit human lifespan development from the list uh, as our example. As I said, although it states qualification date here, it is the date of completion of the unit. For these qualifications, there is no box for credit value as these qualifications are not credit based. There is also no need for a box for the level as all of the units in this suite are at level three. The unit grade is inputted manually and I have indicated the grade achieved was distinction here. If the unit has not been completed, this box is left blank. You click here to add details of another unit. And as you will see, another set of boxes then appears. To add details of another mandatory unit, you click on the top box and select from the drop-down menu. But to add details of an optional unit, you input the title manually in the box below, which is labelled Other. Applicants need to input details of all of the units, both mandatory and optional, and including those that have not yet been completed. Once all of the unit details have been inputted, you click Save.
And that takes you back to this screen. You can add more qualifications by clicking on this link and then searching for the one that you want. You will see that this box has appeared for the BTEC registration number. As explained earlier, it is helpful for students to include this number as it facilitates the matching process. So please make sure that students know their BTEC registration number. Students taking more than one BTEC qualification will have more than one BTEC registration number. There is only one box for a BTEC registration number on the UCAS supply form, but this is not a problem. We can match the students on one of their numbers, and it's probably better that they use the number for the main BTEC qualification in their study program. As we are talking about an extended diploma here, it is unlikely that they will have taken another BTEC qualification, but if they have, the extended diploma will undoubtedly be the main qualification in their program. I hope that has been helpful. You may wish to use the presentation with your students to help to guide them through the completion of their UCAS application form. If you have any further questions about this, or indeed about anything related to your students' applications to university, please contact me at the email address shown on this slide. Thank you.